The Council will now begin its consideration of item two of the agenda, and we start by giving the floor to Mr. Hervé Ladsus. Hervé, please. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, President. I just wish to begin by expressing my deep appreciation for your Council's efforts to mobilize support to defeat the Ebola epidemic, which, as we all know, has had serious political, security, and social effects on all of the countries affected. A month ago, I had the opportunity to brief you on the peace and security implications of the Ebola crisis. And while then I spoke to the political and security ramifications of the health emergency for all the countries in West Africa where we have peacekeeping operations deployed, including Mali and Côte d'Ivoire, my focus nevertheless was on Liberia, the country most affected by Ebola. And today I shall again focus on Liberia, but I would seek to look beyond the immediate health crisis, to look to how we as the international community, deeply committed to this country, may continue to keep its longer-term interests in our focus. Over the past month, several significant developments have transpired. In early October, the President accepted the resignation of her Minister of Justice, Madame Christia, Christiana Ta, after more than five years of service. In departing, Mrs. Ta publicly claimed that she had been thwarted in her efforts to perform her responsibilities of stewarding national security institutions falling under the authority of the Ministry. A few days ago, the National Human Rights Commission released a report challenging the findings of a board of inquiry into the actions of the army while enforcing a quarantine of an Ebola-affected community in Monrovia. Five soldiers have been found guilty of disciplinary offenses related to the incident and have received demotions as well as custody sentences. But the question of criminal prosecution remains. Following direction from the President and the Legislature, the national body responsible for elections has held consultations with various stakeholders on how to proceed with the senatorial elections that, under normal circumstances, would have been held on the 14th of October. Many within the civil society have raised serious concerns about the appropriateness of proceeding with senatorial elections, while at the same time, the electoral body has recommended to the legislature the holding of those elections on the 16th of December, and this is presently under consideration. Yesterday, the 90-day state of emergency imposed by the president to re respond to the health emergency has expired, and there are presently discussions within the legislature regarding its possible extension. Last month, Mr. President, I spoke about our fear of reversal triggered by the Ebola crisis, and the Council is familiar with the challenges facing Liberia, and these have been exacerbated by the health emergency. Political and social divisions in Liberia are deepening. Already weak national institutions are showing increased vulnerability, and under the present circumstances, the very survival of the most economically vulnerable people is at risk. As I told you last month, even the small dignities of our shared humanity, the ability to touch, to comfort loved ones, all this has disappeared in the context of Ebola. However, in the midst of this serious crisis, there is some good news. We are no longer seeing signs that security could seriously deteriorate further. That, you would remember, was our fear in late August and early September. And while this crisis has put unprecedented pressure on public institutions to perform, and it is true to say they have not always been successful, yet some areas of strength have also been demonstrated. For instance, local level officials have responded to challenges at their level in a manner we had not seen before, and this provides a unique opportunity for the decentralization of services. Furthermore, the fact that the National Human Rights Commission demanded accountability for the actions of security forces at West Point 
That provides an important opportunity to enhance the democratic oversight of the security forces. These are goals we have been seeking for years and for which we observed there was so far a concerning lack of urgency to achieve. For Liberia, obviously, this is a moment of national tragedy. As the Minister of Defense told this council in September, the very existence of the nation of Liberia is at stake. But even at such a difficult juncture, there is an opportunity to mobilize the urgency required for transformation. And we must encourage the people and the government of Liberia to seize this opportunity, not only in addressing the immediate crisis, but also in rebuilding the country post Ebola. The people of Liberia have demonstrated considerable resilience throughout the Ebola crisis, and we are impressed by their strength. We must provide them with whatever assistance we can, and we must give consideration to how best we can support not only the Ebola response, but also, perhaps more critically, most critically, the post-Ebola reconstruction effort that will be required. In August, the Secretary General put forward a series of recommendations for how the United Nations could revise its engagement in Liberia, including with respect to enhancing the political role of UNMIL and drawing down its uniform presence. In the current circumstances, we are of the view that it would be appropriate to extend the mandate of UNMIL until September 2015, while taking forward the set of recommendations on political issues and deferring consideration of the drawdown of troops and police until such time as the appropriate health authorities inform that the Ebola crisis is over. As the international community, Mr. President, we must seize the current moment and see how best, collectively, we may help to transform this moment into one that is positively catalytic for the country. We may need, as the Secretary General put it in his report in August, we may need to reimagine our engagement in Liberia. Even as the international community scales up its response to the immediate challenge of defeating Ebola, we must also consider how collectively we may support the rebuilding of Liberia post Ebola. I thank you, Mr. President. <coughs> thank uh, Mr. Lutzius for his briefing.